Months ago we started to notice the occasional fuel smell in the cockpit. Previous to this, it was not uncommon to get a brief whiff of fuel during fuel selector operations, but this was different. The fuel system on the RV6 is fairly straightforward, and this illustration accurately depicts my setup with one exception. I have a Dynan fuel flow transducer just downstream of the emergency fuel pump depicted here. Tracking down a fuel leak proved more difficult than I had expected. There was no fuel smell within the engine cowling. The smell was only present within the cockpit. If I left the canopy closed overnight, opening in the morning would produce a strong fuel smell. So I started looking within the cockpit. This would later turn out to be a mistake. Two years earlier, I had replaced the fuel selector valve as it was becoming so stiff I was concerned I would get stuck between tanks when switching tanks. Because this was a more or less recent change to the fuel system, and I am now experiencing some fuel issues, I thought perhaps I was the culprit of this new problem. As it turns out, I had made one mistake when I installed them. I used the wrong thread seal material during assembly. However, upon close examination of the selector, there was no signs of leakage. Nevertheless, I disassembled the unit and reinstalled using a Permatex high temperature thread sealant. This did not solve the problem. It didn't leak, but it wasn't leaking before. Next, I started inspecting all the fuel lines and all connections within the cockpit. I also removed the aluminum shroud at the root of both wings where they connect to the fuselage. This provides access to the fuel connection at the tank. Again, no visible fuel anywhere, but the smell was present. Inspecting the fuel line from the right tank to the fuel selector valve, I noticed a small area where there had been some chafing, causing surface damage to the line. So I removed the line to pressure test it. I gained no issue found, and I made slight modifications to an interior cover to ensure that no further chafing on the fuel line. I am somewhat embarrassed to say that in hindsight I should have broadened my view of the problem. I was focused on the cockpit, as that is where we could smell fuel. The problem wasn't in the cockpit, it was in the wing. Weeks later we found the problem in the very confined wing root area. This area is difficult to inspect unless you do it properly. Initially, I had only removed the bolts on the top of the wing that were holding the aluminum wing root shroud in place. With the flange sprung up and out of the way, it provided enough access to remove the fuel line. My mistake. The actual connection point remains out of sight as it is recessed under the wing tank flange. Once you remove the entire shroud, you have excellent access, both touch and visible, from underneath the aircraft. It wasn't until we removed the shroud did the problem become visible. Lesson learned. Okay, I got the light on. Yeah. All and, right. And sometimes you think it's it's your it's your drain here, but it's not the drain because most of it is coming out here and here. So we, we definitely here's the leak that we've been looking for for six months. Right it's, there. It's in the right wing. Yep. And uh, Henry found it just a moment ago. Um, it was, uh, although we had this fuel line here. Oh, I need the light for, I'm just taking the light for a sec, Henry. Yep. Ugh. Although we had that fuel line off earlier to inspect it, uh, and the fuel line uh, was okay, the uh, where it actually connected to the fuel tank itself, uh, and I don't know what that thing's called, Henry, the, where it's uh, the part that goes into the tank. It's a fitting. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a tank fitting. Got it. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, grab these. Which one? This one. Yeah. I got him. Okay. 
All right, go ahead. Yeah. There's one there. That's wet. That's wet. That's dry. That's dry. This one is wet. Was wet. Yes. You've tightened it? I tightened it. And we did have... There it is, yeah. We did have... If you look at it closely, you can see there's, there's a murk that, that comes down. From there, up from underneath the... Uh, the big one? Up. Yep. Oh. From there, you can see there's a brown mark. Okay. So that large nut that we're looking at, which is well lit right now. That's the one that was loose. Yeah, and... Uh, that's oh, the one I just tightened. Yeah, and that's larger than three quarters. That was um, a little bit larger. I'm not sure what it was yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, that, that looks 13 sixteenths. Okay, yeah. So that's leaking. So that that's was leaking, like and this little one seemed a little bit wet, but yeah, it is. See the house? Good grief. Yeah. So... It looks like we can tighten it without removing the tank. Exactly. And is it, uh, it looks like maybe five sixteenths? Well, uh, th this is a quarter inch, the little ones. Yeah. And the big one, I'll re-tighten it a little bit because now i got space to tighten that up properly. I'll uh, make sure that it is fully tight. Um, and just retouch. Re I had done from the top, but it's better to go do from the bottom. Retouch this one. Yeah, maybe a socket would be better. A very uh, small yeah, socket. Uh, well, uh, you've got to be careful on the uh, torque. Yeah, agreed. Because I'm going to pick up your glasses because they just fell over here. So I'm oh, going to yeah. put them up somewhere else. Okay. Yeah. Okay.